Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Welcome back to my channel. This is just going to be a really quick video that I wanted to put out there because I haven't seen a lot. I haven't really seen really any of these videos out there. Um, I've seen a lot of sweat proof, uh, how to deal with humidity. So if you guys don't know, I have hyperhidrosis. And really what that is, is just excess sweating. It's like you sweat a lot. Uh, it can be caused by or triggered by a lot of different thing for me personally when I get nervous they get too hot and it's not just like a glisten sweat and it's it's really not even a normal sweating it's just like a downpour of sweat and I've dealt with this my entire life and it's kind of always embarrassed me especially if I had a crush and they would approach me and then I'd just start sweating fuck it they would think I was getting sick or something and that's really not what the case is it's just I have hyperhidrosis sometimes I start pouring sweat in winter time. I've seen a Jackie Ina, she did a video a couple of years ago about hyperhidrosis and she gave really good tips about that for your body. I've seen Wayne Goss, he had a really good video about how to prevent lip sweat, a few ways to do that. But I have really, really, really dry skin and it may not look like it, but I do and I use a lot of hydrating products. Except for my forehead, I do have fungal acne up there so I do have to treat that plate. That's a different way because I do sweat a lot and unfortunately that does cause the fungal acne. Before I get into anything, I just want to say thank you guys so much for being here. I hope that you guys can get something out of this video, so let's just go ahead and jump right into it. So like I was saying before, I do have very dry skin and some of the tips and tricks that I see out there about making your makeup last through sweat, it really has a lot to do with the type of foundation you use, how much powder you put on your face. Go check out Wayne Goss's video. It's really, really good. They, he gives a lot of good tips. Some of those I've been impl implicating myself and I've experimented with. Unfortunately, I have, like I said, dry skin and a lot of dry patches, really textured skin. You crusty, dusty dinosaur. So one of the things that Wayne Goss had mentioned was to um, apply powder before you put your foundation. I see Jackie Ina do this all the time but she has oily skin and I feel like that's more for oily skin because anytime I would try to do that it would just make it way way worse. Also matte foundations don't always work the best for me because of my dry skin and I need a lot of moisture it just doesn't work for me. One of the things that I wanted to say is that powder isn't always better. Unfortunately that's been the case for me a lot of the time especially when I was in high school. I remember this one time I was on the school bus I had like my little MAC pressed foundation powder and I was putting it on. I had already had regular foundation on. Uh, don't ask me. I don't know what was going through my head. I thought because I had it I had to use it. It was winter time and they had the heater on and I was really really hot and my sister was on the bus with me. We get off and she's like you need to go fix your makeup. I said why? And she was like you have sweat marks coming down and I'll I was so embarrassed. The girls' bathroom was halfway through the school, so I'm walking past everybody with sweat marks on my face. And so I get to the bathroom and I see what she's talking about. And it's like the sweat just ran through the powder. I don't know if that's ever happened to you guys, but it's happened to me a lot in my life. And I thought because I would put on powder that that would somehow prevent the foundation from moving around too much, but it actually just makes it worse. So. For me anyways, and for my skin type, uh, it's like water coming down my face. It genuinely is. So I do tend to stick to like the more um, hydrating uh, foundations. I know it kind of seems counterintuitive, but just hear me out. So I didn't put this in a video. I don't know why I skipped over it. But the whole reason why I use a dewy finish foundation instead of a matte finish foundation is because a dewy finish foundation will have some kind of natural oil or humectant to give it that luminosity and glowing effect, whereas a matte finish foundation will have ingredients in it that will give it a non-reflective and very powdery finish. In general, oils tend to be less dense than water, making their molecules impossible to stick together, which is why a dewy finish foundation is, in a way, sweat resistant for those of us who are dry, in comparison to a matte foundation that can absorb the water from sweat. The foundation that I have on, I have a few foundations that are similar to this. It's very skin-like. It is slightly it is matte but it's not drying matte it's close to my skin tone it's kind of like my way of cheating if i have foundation on that's super close to my complexion and i start sweating you can't really tell that it came off too much because it's 
really it's close to my complexion that's kind of my way of cheating a little bit also with a lot when you have a lot of powder on you do have to do touch-ups you will have to be careful of demarcation lines especially with drip marks when you're sweating and stuff um if that's the your route and the way you need to go one thing that i will suggest to you if you do have oily or skin is to um do your setting spray first before anything especially in your problem areas and Wayne Goss talked about this in his video too it's just what I was been experimenting with and what has helped me especially in the summertime like right now I do tend to get oily in my forehead area I guess I'm more combo than dry but I feel like I'm super super dry all the time and I like to take my not a uh, hydrating spray but a primer or a makeup setting spray something that's gonna set your face and it kind of creates almost this barrier and I do that before so instead of putting powder on before your foundation I kind of do that before I do my foundation but I also like hydrate and everything so it, it doesn't look so dry and textured my next tip is to put on less foundation where you sweat the most on my forehead a lot of the time I don't put a whole bunch up here I tend not to pack it on around my nose area I'm starting to sweat right now <laughs> and I don't know if it's just because I'm talking about sweating and I'm just sweating but no it's a little hot in here usually those are the first places that you're gonna notice that your foundation is coming off at right what I like to do especially on really really hot days and I just want to look nice let's say I don't want to put foundation on my forehead on my upper lip or my nose because that's usually or like the sides of my faces right here so I'm just focusing it really just from the brows to the chin and the my neck I like to keep a lot of my coverage down here so if that's the case and that's where I want to keep my coverage, I'll focus my foundation mainly in the center of my face and spread it outward. That's a technique a lot of makeup artists do anyway. That just helps me keep the makeup to a minimum. I know you might say, well, what if I really do need the coverage in the areas that you're talking about? Is it a special occasion or is it work or is it you're just going out to grocery shop or something like that? You know what I'm saying? So sometimes you don't always need to put on a bunch of foundation because you also have your bronzer, you have your blush. And I tend to, and because my forehead's a little bit darker up here already, I tend to use that as contour and shadow. Not everybody has a darker forehead like I do, but you can use your contour, you can use your bronzer as a way to cheat. You can either use cream or powder. Um, now, like I said before, sometimes the powders do tend to, tend to make that demarcation line, but I feel like the less powder you have on your face, the less you're going to know, somebody's going to notice or you're going to notice that you have like this sweat drip. Because I feel like the powders create, you have layers on your face, right, with your makeup. So you have your primer, your foundation, um, in my case, setting spray, because I do it in between layers. And then you'll have your powders, and powder, and powder, and powder. So the last thing that really touches your face is the setting spray and the powder. And so when you do start to sweat, or in my case, when I do start to sweat, you're going to see that if I have too much powder on my face. So I really like to cut back on my powder products and really... Um, utilize the powder products that I am using like the bronzer and the blush and the the less powder I feel from my experience you have on your face the better off you're gonna be also not having so much product on your face is really going to help reduce the noticeable sweat marks because if you have too many layers that are too thick it's going to add to the cakiness overheating and the depth of the sweat marks uh, tip number three if Per se, you are doing a little bit of a lighter day and you don't really want to wear a bunch of foundation. One, you don't have to wear foundation. You're perfectly, I see a lot of makeup artists out there who don't wear foundation and they just wear blush, highlight, and eyeshadow. A lot of makeup creators that I see on YouTube do that. I know Jay Kiss is um, one that does that. I know a lot of people outside YouTube and just in general, sometimes they don't even wear foundation, which is even better, right? The sweat is going to break down your foundation faster. Just be mindful of that about how much product you actually need and how much product you need to put on your face. Sometimes it's good to just swap out the foundation for concealer if you do want something on your face instead of just not having um, coverage at all. Like for me, sometimes I don't like walking outside without any coverage because I, you can see my mustache, you can see where I have my facial hair, you can see like where I have my scarring and stuff. And sometimes I like to have that cover 
um, coverage or something covering it so it's not so obvious. So what I like to do with that sometimes is just take a concealer that is my complexion or mix it in with like a smidge of foundation or something like that, just very, very minimal and um, mix it with a, you can do a kind of making your own BB cream or even get a BB cream that would work too. It will give you the coverage because that's what concealer is for if you have a good one and it'll stay put. That's something to think about really is like do I really need the foundation but if you're like me and I just sometimes I like to just have my foundation on I don't care if I'm gonna sweat through it but it's good to have like a foundation that has some kind of longevity to it like for instance the L'Oreal infallible 24-hour fresh wear foundation that's a really really good foundation um, that I found if I'm sweating a lot if you're looking for that coverage it's not super matte at all it's, it's very much like a skin finish foundation so that's one that's one out of many. Um, the one I'm trying right now, I actually really like it. I haven't, it, have, it hasn't broken apart at all. It's the Il Maquillage Flawless Base Foundation. And like I said, I'm trying it out right now. I'm gonna keep trying it out. Um, but so far, like I've been sweating all day and it hasn't broken apart. You know how sometimes when you sweat too much and it just starts to break apart and you can tell? It hasn't done that at all. Also, the way you prep your skin. Um, I did experiment when I was younger using an antiperspirant on my face. That mess my skin up so bad do not do that i don't i know it may work for some people but i'm telling you do not put antiperspirant on your face it is not a good idea if you have sense especially if you have sensitive skin like i do dry skin like i do textured skin like i do do not do that to your skin it is not worth it but what you can do is get a setting spray that works really really good that when you put it on after you put your makeup on you can feel it do something and kind of lock in your product on your face and kind of melt it together use that so the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray is one of the few setting sprays that I have tried that actually gives you a water resistant effect for your makeup. If you're already struggling with dryness and textured skin, it's this is also a mattifying product, so that's something to think about. Use that. So let's say you're not putting a bunch of foundation on your forehead. Um, so what you what you'll do is you'll just take your setting spray, go over your foundation, let that sit for a minute, and then blend it out a little bit, and then go over it one more time in the area, focus it in the areas that you're going to be sweating a lot. This, you can use the Morphe um, uh, Prep and Setting Mist, uh, MAC Fix Plus works really good for that. Um, and I know there's a few other products um, that you can use. I will pop some suggestions up on the screen for you as well. My final tip, I know I said three, but what is this, like five now? <laughs> But my final tip is just, is don't let it stress you out. I know hyperhidrosis, for those of us who have it, it sucks. And it's it can be embarrassing and it can be kind of gross and you can smell kind of musky. Go to Jackie Anna's video for the body one. Honestly, if you can't help it, you can't help it. If you want to look good and you want to have your makeup on and you want to make it last, do the best you can. But a lot of the time when I sweat, I tend to, and I learned this from a drag queen who had, who put out this tip when sweating a lot because they perform, they dance, they do a lot of acrobatics and stuff, but they have all of this stuff on their face. What I've taken from the drag community is when you're sweating, don't immediately blot it off. Try to get it like a fan or something, and I know how it is. It does not matter how much you fan yourself because as soon as you stop fanning yourself, the sweat comes automatically and it drives me freaking nuts. I don't know if that's for everybody, but but that's but that's my case. So get yourself a fan and fan yourself down and then you'll take your, depending on where you're at, um, you can get your beauty sponge or you can get uh, like a paper towel or something or even toilet paper works better in my experience. Or just make sure you don't like get the stuff that's stuck on your face off and just kind of lightly just tap. It's kind of like having the bare minimum on your face, but not because you're getting the coverage where you want it without having to really worry of disturbing your makeup at all. I know having hyperhidrosis is a sensitive issue and for a lot of people it can be really embarrassing, sometimes debilitating, especially if you have to talk in front of people. Like I used to sweat at work all the time because it, and it wasn't just because it was hot, it was because I had to like get in front of people I didn't know and talk and I was nervous and I was scared. I, Fear of public speaking people. And I'm on YouTube, so I don't know. 
I mean, I'm not a professional by any means. I'm not like a dermatologist or anything, so I can't really give you tips on how to stop the hyperhidrosis. I know it has a lot to do with hormones or stress or whatnot. So I hope you guys got something from this video. I hope these tips help you in any way. Be sure to check out the videos that I link in the description. It will be the Wayne Goss video that I talked about in the Jackie Anna video as well. Thank you guys so much for being here today. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.